So, um, what I'd like to do is start, I, so I organized, each time I do this, I try to organize it in some kind of theme. And the first part of the theme is going to be about uh, space, uh, because we have several games that were p players were playing for space on either side. And that's why I picked Vishnu's game to go first. Uh, the game is in itself short, but there's a couple um, notable variations. Okay, so now this variation, I am partly responsible for everything good and bad that happens to Vishnu in this variation, I think because I encouraged him to play it as a, as a violent variation. It is one, though, where white is going to take some time to play for space. And um, is obviously risky because you are taking some time out from the development. So there's a variety of things that black can do. And my sense of it, just reading Vishnu's notes. By the way, on the right-hand side here, you see that I'm going to always put up people's notes, whatever they wrote. Uh, sometimes I've written a thing or two in there myself, but generally that's the player's notes there. Um, and I'll say one of the great things about the show is our notes have definitely improved over the years. In any case... So I like what Black did, and it, what I was going to say was it became clear that maybe Black was just making it up as he went along. But so far, I like what Black's done because he's just remained flexible in terms of how to play. And I guess, what one of the, and, and the other thing that's interesting about this position is that it can uh, change swiftly into either a Benoni or a Benko with the bishop, instead of wasting time with bishop g7, with just somehow getting hacked over here. Okay, now castles. And let's talk about the position a little bit, because <laughs> I feel like this is the first move where Vishnu, it's not a bad move that he does, but it um, violates maybe what the principles, if you like, of the opening are. First of all, let's say uh, that the, one of the first things we're doing here is we're dom playing to dominate this knight. We're actually trying to say that the knight is not developed on f3 because it's so fully dominated by these pawns. Um, the next obvious thing we're saying is that this bishop is incredible and that this bishop will probably get traded, which will make it even more incredible. The really tricky part about it for white, though, is like he doesn't know where his king's going to go. Uh, and he doesn't know where, say, the bishop on f1 is going to go. It's not actually that clear. The knight on g1, also not entirely clear where the thing is going to go. And the, the, just generally, white's aim for the next, let's say, five to ten moves is going to be to try to put black on lockdown. So, for example, this knight owes us some moves because it can't go to the natural square. This bishop doesn't have any natural developing square either. So there are real problems for black uh, developing his pieces. So the right move, I think, is knight e2. And even here, and Vishnu notes this, it puts this in his notes, that you're, it's not even clear after knight e2 where you're going to go. Like, let's say b5, Vishnu wrote knight f4, but you could just as well go to g3, which to my mind is a little bit more traditional. Now, Notice, white is not in, in any hurry to take on b5. I think that's really important to note. Because when we think about the overall dynamic, black is better developed. So if black can bust open the position and trade some pieces, then boy howdy, he's going to be much better, right? And that's one of the reasons this kind of uh, play, playing for space, is so much, honestly, more difficult than the player who has less space. So that's the first mistake. And so bishop d3, not, it's not a terrible move. But um, interestingly, uh, Shiroff played knight e2 here. And I just want to say for me, this on chess.com, this thing calls it the Kamok variation. And Kamok was this ancient dude who wrote a book called Pawn Structure and Chess that set my chess back incredibly far because it had the premise that pawns are people and pawns are not people. We've been through this on the show. And a lot of the old timers thought that pawns were people. In any case, he's you know obsessed about pawn structure instead of thinking about the pieces. 
Uh, and I think this variation, I call it anyway, the Shira variation, because he was the guy who played it, and his intuition as well was knight e2 here. Anyways, bishop d3, not so bad. b5, and now the critical mistake. And this is what I meant when with bishop d3 being, uh, let's call it off-tune or something with the rest of the development because we didn't know that it belonged there and it might well belong on c4 say if black takes on c4 and the right move here is by all means knight e2 instead of taking on b5 so um pawn takes by the way vishnu gave b5 um and uh a question mark. I'm not sure that's a bad move to play b5. It seems totally rational to me. Um, I've seen a bunch of stuff like this. I can imagine playing b5. Uh, I've seen a bunch of stuff like this with Levon and others playing against the f3 system. Um, so, snip. Bad move. And then black opens things up as he should. And then he himself plays a bad move with knight takes d5. And we're going to see that black's uh, struggles here, and white's honestly, are a little bit materialistic. They're, that both sides are playing for material. So on uh, knight takes d5, Vishnu now makes a mistake, but let's first look at what black should play. Black should, without even th th taking any time off his clock, play a6. And we've got a fantastic, uh, let's call it Benoni-style position where black has even more time than in a traditional Benoni because he didn't take any time for g6 and because this move f3 is a, both a tempo and unclear if it's that useful in this position. Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Black, it's going to be difficult for white to castle. Really tough position for white. Now, knight takes d5, I thought this was a mistake for sure, and Vishnu's next move I thought was also a mistake. He played bishop h7, and we're going to get an interesting position, but one which I don't think uh, black should work, have too much grief. So when I saw knight takes d5, I instantly remembered, we, this comparison I'm about to give, maybe you guys will think it's a little bit far-fetched, but I for sure thought knight e2 was the right move. Um, and that's my exclam there. Because, first of all, when you take on h7, you know, you're really helping black develop. And with knight e2, you keep the tension, uh, and all of your pieces are going to be open. And the pawn on b5 is, at least for the moment, annoying uh, the knight on b8. And let me show you a comparable variation. Like I said, this is just maybe comparable in my mind. Back in the last millennium, when I played against the Benko, I got this position a bunch. And I always thought knight takes d5 was a mistake because after castles, white is going to get a nice initiative. White will by all means play e4, and all the pieces will be active. Uh, so, yeah, a similar situation to this thing Black put himself in with knight takes d5 here. Right. Vishnu is here writing that bishop h7 is the top engine move. Um, yeah, you know, I yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I like knight e2. All right, so bishop h7, snip, and now Vishnu gives this wild computer variation with like rook e8 and stuff. I guess I'll show it. To me, it's not, I think what black did is very human. Bishop e6, this is, this is a little out there with queen h4, and it's not even, one of the weird computery things about this move is it's not entirely clear even what we're threatening. But the idea is that we're, if, if knight e2, queen c4. And honestly, it's funny, instantly what this reminded me of is uh, the, the Nipo Ding game, where Ding had an amazing escape, and it was, of course, it was only a thing the computer would show. And uh, 
after the game, Nepo said, well, man, if, if he had played that move, then he should be instantly disqualified <laughs> because he would obviously be using a computer. But no, this is the natural human move. Every Almost everybody's going to do that, right? They're going to say check, and they're going to play bishop b7. <clears throat> okay. And now we get, uh, I think here, a critical position where black makes a fundamental mistake after Vishnu's knight of four. Black has to say to himself, I think, that the knight, that this light square needs to be uh, defended. <clears throat> And so knight e5 struck me as just very wrong because now the light squares fall. Um, instead, knight f6, and uh, I'm not, I don't know who's better, you know? I don't. It, it could go either way. Um, the com you know, the computer's going to say whatever the computer's going to say, but just from my human perspective, I don't know, black seems, it's a fighting game. So, knight e5. Beautiful. And now this is a great example where the bishop on b4 is pretty well hung out to dry. Queen c2, bishop d2, and now a fantastic... Uh, this is where tactics trainer maybe really can help, also the maiden twos, is that Vishnu now spots a great just pattern, I guess. Knight e7, queen in, and then now we're coming all the way in, and a very nice mate here. Very nice, Vishnu. So, you know, one funny thing I want to say, I was talking to some friends about, is, you know, Vishnu's like 1900 or something, right? But he's fine. He's got some opening theory. He's got some mating patterns. And I feel like it's like when we're thinking about, the, let's say, the 1990s or 1980s, people that were, um, you know, 1900, they would be... They wouldn't be, they wouldn't have this kind of they wouldn't be able to to mate you like this. That's my that was my experience of a nineteen hundred back in the day. Now maybe I'm just having a false memory of it, but that's just my sense of how chess has changed. Okay. So beautiful game, Vishnu. And now we're gonna look at a couple games that I feel are very similar. Um the first Kevin Lee played a, well, I guess one of the best games that's been submitted actually here on this channel, uh, also with the space advantage, and um, also with a variation where we can talk about the re the candidates tournament that's now going on. So, very um, critical and interesting position here, and this goes back many many years. Um, been around pre since the pre-computer days and what's going to happen and, and black really doesn't understand the positional danger he's in here is that if white achieves e4 both of the pieces are going to die right and and that's really a problem a lot of times slav players are just so happy because they get their bishop outside the pawn chain but if he gets stuck on g6 he really is for the most part just totally dead um, the classic game there is the Capablanca Winter game where the bishop can't get out at all because of the double death pawns. But it's also very similar here because it's going to take so long for that bishop to get out. Now, as you know, it was the famous uh, ding Fabi game where Fabi in this position played bishop b4 and things got really hectic after king f2. So I did a, I'm doing this uh, series, by the way, called move, move of the Day, and that was the Move of the Day for that round. You can find that on the Chess Dojo YouTube site. And I just tried to talk about one move for like 10, 15 minutes. I don't want to talk forever about stuff. And uh, actually, the, the Move of the Day that I then got into was uh, this later E5 move. God, that was so insane. Anyway, you can look that up. Uh, black c5 is, in fact, I think, the most common move in this position. And what's interesting is black's next move I thought was okay. Snip, snip. But it's here where black needs to be very sensitive to the fact that both of his pieces are poor over here. Um, 
Black, white has his own problems, though. The, the beauty of this exchange on c6 is that the knight is kept at bay. And we're going to see there's a joke about that later on in this game. But the knight is kept at bay, and more power has given been given to black on this b file. So I think this is actually a very, let's call it theoretical position, even though when I looked at the database, knight c6 wasn't the main move. It was like cd, but I like knight c6. And it's only here, I think black makes a, a mistake by taking. He should play, I guess, something like well, queen move somewhere. And there's just some annoying problems for white to deal with, with the dark squares. And you, ne if, you if, I, if black can trade off this bishop any, any time, then he should be doing okay, I would think. This knight needs to figure out some way back as well. We want to really stress that. So let's look at what happened. C takes, queen takes, and Kevin writes, I felt really good with my position after the opening. Yeah, I think now this C takes is such a benign looking move, but now you're in control. And one of the interesting things about domination is they really do turn on a dime. It's because black has a couple development moves ahead, and if he just lets you into the game, well, then you're going to be glorious. Was it a Slav the Capablanca game? I don't think so. I think it was an E4, E5 game. But if you look up Winter Capablanca, it'll come up right away. Okay, so um, white's better. And um, maybe a human thing to do here, although black's move is, interest, is normal looking enough, would be to trade and then acquiesce to maybe knight d7 and bishop c5. You're gonna be you're gonna be worse, but okay. So black plays queen c7, and uh, really interesting moment here. I don't think I don't actually believe that Kevin's move is the best, but it is beautiful from a variety of aesthetic reasons. So when we just look at it for a second, this bishop amazing. Absolutely amazing, working so well with the pawns on light squares. These guys shut out. White's grief is really that these two pieces aren't working. Uh, right. But he's got really a better development, and all kinds of good things are coming his way. And as long as we can prevent this guy from moving to bishop d6, I think like the natural move, maybe you're getting a little drama with that. A simple way for white to hold a nice advantage is something like rook d1. But check Kevin's move out here, man. This is really good. Bam! And, um, you know, really strong stuff. And like I said, the reason I think this is so beautiful is both the bishop and the knight, the, this bishop and this knight, need to do something in the position. And this is a way for uh, white to do that. Uh, is there a lot of calculation involved? Yes, but it's starting to look like the duke versus the evil count here, right? Rook c1, rook d1, exclam. And here, you know, a lot of players, I think, would be nervous that they are not going to catch the piece, but Kevin calmly plays king e2, and every, like the, with Morphe versus the Duke, everything's coming in. Check to the bishop. Thank you very much. And I think it's important to say one reason that we know that this is lost is not just of the pawn and the extra rook move, but because this guy is so terrible. Bishop e7, and look at this move. Bam! So... One thing about space is a lot of times when I'll just speak from my own experience, I think other people feel this as well. When you're playing with a space advantage, it feels like, oh, this game's going to go on forever. Like it's just going to last forever. And how long do I have to massage this position to win? And there are games that, in fact, go forever. But the majority of the time, it actually ends very soon because black is going to try to either bust out or just have such grief in uh, organizing his stuff that he collapses.